time, I was on Kearney Street near, Ch yeah, it's Chinatown. Just cruising along, there was, it was middle of the day, not heavy traffic, mm -hmm. and someone kept riding their horn, riding their horn. It was some other delivery company van driver, mm -hmm. and they took off, and I got the information. I was like, why? And I used to just like turn, hey, hi, you must know me, instead of, you know, doing the bird. And that just escalates, you know. <laughs> you learn, because there's enough stuff to go, accidents and so on. So you you kind of just keep it up, upbeat. So... I got a hold of the company, I wrote them this long flourishing letter about, I really appreciated the way your driver was honking at me nonstop as a show of affection. You know, it was totally tongue in cheeky and they, lo they loved it. They laughed and then they razzed the person doing it and never heard from them again. But anyway, I just turned it around into something positive. There you go. You could use that right now. Yeah. <laughs> Stopping on by. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. You know, you had some really interesting stories. And uh, is there anything else that you want us to know about working with the monkeys that we might find it interesting? Well, they, they're people like everybody else. And I saw a lot of interesting things. Here's the thing. The, there's popularity. And like we have a president that most people know because of a reality TV <laughs> show. And dialing back to Star Trek, which a lot of their stuff, the tech on there became true. Our phones are like the communicators. And then applying that to the monkeys, John Lennon said the monkeys were doing something we couldn't do because we were too busy being a band. Mm -hmm. The monkeys made a TV show where they could put hit songs on every week and people discover you. But it also touched people. There are plenty of bands out there, plenty of artists who sold records and are people familiar with, but when you go on TV, that's ubiquity. And so it affected people different ways, and I would see a lot of people in wheelchairs and not mentally fully endowed to, to say, you know, they, they were handicapped or whatever yeah. is political, politically correct these days. Yeah. And it touched them. It touched so many people. And I... I thought about it more after Davy died. I right. had a chance, because while, while you're doing it, you're just thinking about your own stuff. I'm thinking about my own music, my own gigs, because I didn't do that full time. But at the same time, it was this wonderful runaway of opportunities and meeting people. And uh, clearly, everybody you work with introduces you to n new people. Mm -hmm. And people that are obviously connected and established have those connections that go with it. So it was a pretty wonderful experience that way, but just seeing how it touched people in a positive way. It was about four guys who were finding their way without adults helping them. And there was innovation involved, there was ingenuity involved. Uh, they did the starving artist thing, but they made a joke out of it, they made fun out of it. And, uh, and, it, and the music was obviously quite good. They got A-list songwriters, plus the albums that they actually did their own productions eventually. They, all those things just reached so many people. And it's very amazing. It, and that's why I think it's Star Trek, because that, that reached so many people, and that had a message. It really did. They were, somebody at work was just talking about it the other day, how some mm -hmm. of the um, you know, people of color on that show and how they were getting a lot of pushback saying, we don't watch you on this show and, mm -hmm. you, you know, you don't represent us and all this bullshit that they, you know, persevered and now, you know, look at what we have now. There's so much variety. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much, um, well, there's some other things that you could say about who's being represented on television these days, but at least mm -hmm. um, in terms of, you know, what your background is, that isn't so much of an issue anymore, so... You've had some progress. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> and uh, what was your favorite song that you worked on with Davey or that you got to perform? The, on the tour, the 2011 tour, uh -huh. which musically was fantastic. It was a long show. We did the full Head album. And I'd say one of them would be, well, Mickey sang most of the hits. Um, but... It would be uh, like Porpoise Song that both Mickey and Davey sang on. Mm -hmm. And that was a fun one. That was very trippy. <laughs> it was almost like doing a Pink Floyd song. Mm -hmm. And then um, 
Well, we did Daydream Believers so much. That was the one that paid the light bill. <laughs> Keep those lights on. The second I look lights. <laughs> oh, well, actually, on his show, mm -hmm. uh, I wish I would have brought some of those recordings. We used to yeah. do Van Morrison songs. We did a Van Morrison. We would do these really eclectic covers. He'd pull them out of the hat. And so it was half the show would be his solo stuff, monkey stuff, the hits. We had to do the hits. I didn't know and, that. And then, uh, then we would just pick out these covers we did an Oliver medley because he had a big association on Broadway uh -huh. with Oliver. And uh, okay. he, he wanted to do these Latin pop songs and different things. Ron Dante, the Archie's guy, Sugar Sugar, yeah. wrote, wrote a song called Amore. And Ron has had quite a career. He'd pop up at our shows and we'd do Sugar Sugar and things like that. But uh, yeah, there, there were some pretty eclectic covers. And he did one of my songs, the, this one that uh, "Love, Love Alone," mm -hmm. and I wasn't there. Oh, I no. didn't do. I didn't always do all the shows. And, uh -huh. and I get, oh yeah, we did the King song. It was called. He, that's what they called it. But anyway. <laughs> well, I'm sure you took it as a compliment. <laughs> yes, he was very supportive of me and the other guys as an artist, and that meant a lot because people respected his his legacy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you don't know exactly how it reached people until it's not there anymore. Right. Definitely. I'm going to listen to them. I go through phases where I listen to them, and then I don't listen to them for a very long period of time, and then I'm like, God, I miss that. I need that back in my life. <laughs> yeah. It's like that missing piece, you know? <laughs> well, thanks again for stopping on by, and um, we'll make sure to check you out the next time you're in San Francisco, the Bay Area, you name it. And then you're welcome to come again, too, if you want. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. There's my the phone. The more, the merrier. It's been, I have to tell you, it's been kind of weird. I've been here seven years, and it's hard to get people to promote their projects in San Francisco now. I don't know what's going on. Oh, I'm, I'm merciless about that. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not going to crash your wedding or your funeral or something with flashing cards well, around. <laughs> but at the right moment, I... I hear things. I hear people, they have a, a mix that's not happening. Yeah. The, the music's great, but it just needs some tweaking. So, oh, yeah. let me let me get my my mitts on that, and let's make that fly. Let's make it much better and clear things up. And I love helping people, actually. It's it's a mode of service for me to help people get good mixes and make mm -hmm. good tracks, get their songs done. There's a lot of people out there, too, uh, more... Well, I guess it'd be any age, but it seems like, an example, I had a doctor who was turning 50, mm -hmm. and he wanted to do his own Sgt. Peppers. His sound, he played mandolin, mm -hmm. but he said he had some money, and he said, let's do this. This is my legacy. This is something huh. I want my kids to hear and say, yeah, my dad did this, and he had all these great songs. He wasn't going to go off and start touring. Musically, it reminded me of Jackson Brown a little bit, okay. that, that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I produced his album, and we had a blast. And, you know, I had tubas and mariachi bass and all kinds of crazy stuff on there, so it was fun. Well, that sounds great. And you have those memories, and you're going to continue to make more memories. So yes. It's never ending, right? That's right. All right. Well, until next time, stay tuned for more Mutiny Radio.